Today, we're building a text analysis pipeline. For our project, we're going to assemble a team of data processing agents that will analyze, classify, and extract information from an invoice. We're going to use the powerful LangGraph framework to build our agent network. This is the first video in a series called AI in Action. More on that later, but for now, let's jump into our use case. We're going to build a Python-based pipeline for processing invoices using LangGraph agents and tools. We'll extract key details from an invoice, classify the client into tiers, calculate the profitability based on service costs, and generate a profitability summary. Invoice processing is a critical task for businesses as it directly impacts financial management, decision-making, and client relationships. This is just one example of an everyday use case that can be improved through AI. AI in Action is designed to demonstrate the true potential of AI. In each video, we dive into specific challenge, from automating customer service to optimizing operations and show how to tackle it with cutting-edge AI techniques such as agents, chatbots, and RAG. But this is not a one-person operation. It counts on your active participation and contributions. Each week, we'll be collecting ideas submitted by the community. We are already receiving a good number of contributions, and we hope that you will consider chiming in. LangGraph is a framework for creating applications using graph-based workflows. Each node represents a function or a computational step. Edges define the flow between these nodes based on certain conditions. If you'd like an introduction on LangGraph, we've got a few tutorials on this channel, so please make sure to check them out. So, why LangGraph? Reliability is one of the hallmarks of LangGraph, and it makes it different from other agent frameworks. The platform gives agents more control while keeping meaningful guardrails in place. But most importantly, it helps reduce LLM errors, providing a more fluid user experience. Now, let's take a look at how our agents will solve the problem. In the next slide, we'll show a sequence diagram with the actions of each node in the graph. The sequence diagram, also included in the GitHub repo, describes how the agents are called and how state is updated after each LLM call. The first to act is the client classification agent. Afterwards, an agent extracts key client entities from the invoice text. Third is the total amount due agent. Next, the profitability agent. And finally, the summary agent creates a summary of the invoice. The vertical picture on the right represents the line graph graph with its nodes, edges, start and end points. Now let's move on. If you need support or just want to connect with like-minded AI developers, consider joining the Discord server. The link will also be in the video description. Let's start by importing our classes. And for this, we're going to import from OS. From typing, we're going to import list and type dict. We're going to use type dict for our line graph state. From Colorama, we're going to import the for class, which will give us an opportunity to use colorful terminal messages. Next, from LangChain and LangGraph, we're going to import prompt template, human message, and state graph. As usual, we're going to import .env, and from .env, we're going to load our environment variables, including our OpenAI key. We are using OpenAI, but feel free to use any model that works for you, including local LUM models. Next is a couple of utility methods. The first one will be a invoice generation method. We just use this to write an invoice markdown file to the file system, so it's easy to read later by the agents. But feel free to use your own invoice, it doesn't matter what format it is. It could be text, markdown, Excel spreadsheet, PDF file, anything that can be parsed easily by Python script. And then you can pass that information into the line graph graph. The agents will process it just the same as in this tutorial. All right, let's continue. So this step is fairly straightforward. We're just creating a very basic invoice with a date, payment terms, net 30, number of services, in the invoice, we're not including the total because we have an agent that will calculate the total and including the profitability. Okay, so we have some notes, we have bank and payment details, and that's really all that it is for this simple invoice. We're going to save this to the file system under our data folder, and the file will be included in the GitHub repo as well. The next utility method will read this file. So first we're going to write the file, then we're going to read it and pass the data as the text parameter to our state graph. And now the most important part of any line graph is the state object. The way you define the state object defines how you're going to keep 
track of the state as it evolves as the agents execute various steps. In this case, we have the text which will store the invoice text, classification will classify the client, entity list will be just a list of strings for the entities such as clients, payment terms, as well as services. Cost of services is a float and the total amount will also be calculated by the agent. Profitability is a simple string, profitable or not profitable. And finally, the summary is a couple of sentences summarizing this invoice. Next, we're going to initialize our model. We're going to use the chat OpenAI by passing the model. We're using GPT-40 Mini today. Temperature will be zero because we don't want our model to get creative with this invoice processing. Next, our first note. This is our agent definition for our classification agent. It starts with a doc string that says classify the client tier based on the invoice amount. And then we're passing the tiers. Tiers are zero to 100,000, 100,000 to a million and over a million. And then the return from this is updating of the state value with the client classification. One of the strings, silver, gold, or platinum. Moving on to the next agent. The next agent will extract the invoice amount from the total. So it will process the entire invoice and it will create a total number in the form of a float. So this will just return the float and update our land graph state. Our next agent will extract entities such as the client, services, and payment terms. Client will be a string, services will be a list of strings, and payment terms will be another string. And by the way, let me open a parenthesis here. In situations like this, a more structured way to extract data would be to use identic classes and have structured LLM outputs as classes. Because this is an introductory example and because this works, I didn't feel the need to complicate it even further. And this serves our purpose and it demonstrates an easy way how to use LLMs to classify information for rather straightforward examples such as an invoice text. Our next agent will be an analysis of the profitability. It will compare the total invoice amount to the cost of services that will pass and determine whether we are profitable or not profitable. The return will be a simple string. Once this is done, and it's just based on a simple number comparison, the next is the fifth and final agent node summarize it will create a couple sentences summary of this invoice the return type from this will be a string and it will update the land graph state with the summary parameter once our nodes are defined let's define our workflow and we will create the graph with workflow equals state graph by passing the graph class and after that we're just going to add our nodes each add underscore node method takes a string with the name of the node and the second parameter is the python method definition for our agent next we're going to set the entry point the entry point could be the start predefined entry point from line graph or any node in the graph we're defining classify client because it's a meaningful start point for our endpoint we're going to define its own endpoint but let's just add all the edges after the entry point we're going to add each and every edge and finally we're going to end with the end node where our graph will end next we're going to compile our graph and take a note here that we're not passing a memory we're not passing a configuration normally for line graph if you watch other tutorials on this channel you will see that sometimes we do pass memory in situations where we have a conversation or a chat bot and messages need to be retained it makes sense to pass memory but since this is pretty much a one shot workflow there is no need for memory or it wouldn't improve the outcomes that much but you may want to consider adding memory in theory it would enhance the operations of the graph the configuration would let you persist the graph if you need the threads persisted onto the file system okay let's continue now we're going to draw a picture of the graph in a mermaid format and that's always a great idea to visualize our nodes and our edges for this tutorial it will be a straight sequential line of five agent nodes plus one end node next we're going to create a utility method called process invoice this is where we're going to invoke the llm and it's just a convenience where we can pass the invoice text and the cost of services and there will be passed to the state graph object. Okay, finally, let's execute our graph. We're going to create a fictitious cost of services of $264,000. And then the result will be process invoice with the invoice text, which we read from the file system, and then we pass cost of services. 
Finally, we're going to use the Colorama to print colorful messages, each identifying a specific outcome from this pipeline. First, we're going to print the invoice text in blue. Then we're going to print the client classification in yellow, total amount, cost of services, profitability, and the entities that were passed. Finally, we're going to end with the summary. We're going to save our file, open the integrated terminal, and run our script with python space main.py. And because we're using GPT-40 mini, which is a very fast model, the answer should flow in rather quickly. And here we have the answer. Let's inspect this. The blue text at the top is the invoice as it was read from the file system. Let's inspect this invoice. We have a client name. We have service definitions. We have six services here, including web development, email marketing, graphic design. Each of these services come with its own line item of the invoice amount. We have notes, we have bank details, and we have payment terms. Next, in yellow, we have our client classification. And we can see the way the LLM is processing the information. First, it identifies all the services, then it creates a total, and based on that, it classifies the client. So it's a multi-step, it involves math and calculation, and once the calculation is done, it also involves the judgment of determining whether this client is silver, gold, or platinum. So we see GPT for all mini in action, and it produces wonderful results, very fast and inexpensive model. I don't see a reason why it shouldn't be used for most of the operations. And here we can see that this client is classified in the gold category in the final classification. Next up is our total amount due, and it calculates the total amount due. It's the same calculation as the previous one, but it makes sense to add it as a separate agent because we can update the state with that discrete value of a float. Next up is cost of services. This number was already passed. And our next agent is the profitability agent, and the return type here is profitable. The cost of services is 264,000 and the total due is 286,000. So we are making a little bit of profit with this client. In white type, next is the entity list. We start with the client name, ABC Corporations. Then we have list of services in string. And finally, we have the terms, which is net 30, also a string. The red types is the invoice summary. It's a couple of sentences summarizing the client name, the services, the total amount, bank details, and so on and so forth. So that's all. The graph with five agents processed our invoice and printed out this information. Now, this of course is a very extensible example and you can add notes, remove notes, put the invoice into a folder, send an email notifications. There is a infinite number of possibilities to add more nodes or add conditions to these nodes. But for this simple example, I think as a data processing pipeline example, this demonstrates the value. Now let's take a look at the files. So here's the invoice that markdown file that was generated from our method. It's a simple markdown file in Visual Studio Code. If you have the markdown plugin, you can also see the preview and it provides a very nice preview of this invoice. Now we can close that and let's take a look at the graph that was produced. This is a graph of our mermaid diagram representing the land graph definitions. Each one of these boxes in rectangular shapes is one of the agents. So we have a total of five agents. We have the start node and the end node and the lines in between represent the edges. A straightforward text processing pipeline as mentioned can be extended, can be modified. If you come up with some interesting use cases or ideas, please post in the comments or showcase your idea or product and share with the community. Every time you run the graph after your modifications, this image gets regenerated. So you always have the latest representation of your land graph agent network. All right, so that's our demo. It's a very short, short and sweet. Hopefully it demonstrated the point of creating a multi-agent network that can process text. It's a data processing pipeline that reads the text from a file, then uses LLM to process the text and then creates a summary classification and performs other operations. Now, let's summarize what we've done. Today, we've demonstrated how LangGraph and AI-powered workflows can streamline complex operations like invoice processing, making them more efficient, accurate, and scalable. Whether you're a developer exploring AI workflows 
or a business leader seeking actionable solutions, this pipeline provides a practical example of AI in action. We've come to the end of this first AI in action tutorial. If you've stayed this long, I'd like to thank you for your time and attention. I hope you enjoyed this introductory video and you learned something new. If you like the new series, please consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a thumbs up. If you have any feedback, please submit a comment. Thank you and see you in the next one.